Hey everybody. Hey. We thought we would check in because we're in the middle of finishing some projects on the RV and we're not necessarily done with them. Sue is painting and it's, as you can see, it's not sunny out. So I don't think our paint's gonna dry. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we've been set back a little bit. I got food poisoning. Took really? me out for like three or four days. Yeah, really bad. He's had some weird <laughs> relapses. We won't go into details. No. <laughs> I kind of threw my back out for a couple of days and we've had a couple deaths in the family in the last two weeks, so. So instead of trying to cobble this together into the thing we're working on and not having it complete, because that's disappointing, uh, we thought we'd take the chance to answer some questions people have asked us. Mm -hmm. First one, our last trip, like we left from Chico in May of last year, 2021, came back here October, November, end of October of 2021 we did 4064 miles in the rv maybe a little bit more than that but that's how much we logged 4064 miles in the rv 180 nights so half a year mm -hmm. so we did six months that doesn't include two two and a half months that we spent just stationary in morro bay that was another 800 miles so last year we probably did close to 5,000 miles in the rv it drove great we only had a couple things that broke what were things that broke? The biggest oh. one was the that the engine brake situation. Our, so our motorhome, because it's a diesel, has air brakes and it has an air compressor that compresses the compressors that give you brakes. And it has a little governor on it that tells the compressor when the air brake system is up to pressure and our governor uh, broke off of the compressor. So it failed in a state of constantly compressing rather than shutting the compressor off and turning it back on. Uh, you can get into details about how it actually does that, but I don't need to do that now. No. Anyway, we spent a couple days and got that fixed because every freight liner and Cummins place in the Pacific Northwest was like six weeks out. Yeah. So we had to figure that one out. Um, we got our couch at Ikea. Yes. And it's it's been a year of using it and it's still in really great shape. I would definitely recommend it. Yep. The hardest part was trying to find something that fit within 70, I think it's 71 and a half inches is the slide mm -hmm. size, is that size, which you can find them at 72 and 74. Yeah. So we found one at Ikea uh, and it's really, really lightweight. Very lightweight and, and it's we, comfortable. Yeah, and we did anchor it to the floor. Mm -hmm. It does not have seat belts in it anymore. No. I don't think it would be, it, I wouldn't it's recommend. It's not road legal. Our couch is not road legal. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend having it for like seat belting kids into it because I don't think the frame could handle it in an accident. The oh, one yeah. that was in there was steel. It was a steel frame, which yes. made it very heavy. We just don't need the seats while traveling. So we were okay with taking it out. People have asked about our recirculating shower. And honestly, this last year, we haven't used it very much because of the places we were kind of forced to stay. Uh, all had hookups. So yeah. we used it maybe a week or two this last year, which when we used it, it worked really good. Really great. Um, but no, it does not fully um, remove all the soap out of the system. It's more of a, if you think of it like a recirculating bath water type thing, which some people say is gross. <laughs> We've been in other third world countries where you're not supposed to get the water. If, you, if it touches your mouth or the inside of your nose or your eyes, you're done for. Yeah. So this is definitely many, many, many steps up above that. We have it going through a UV filter that is rated for almost double the flow rate of the pump running through it. Mm -hmm. The fact that the water is a little bit cloudy, if it has some soap in it, diminishes its ability to clean it as well. But it's also, we know where the water is, where it's coming from, where it's been. Um, and we've done everything that is reasonably possible to do a quick recirculating pump. We've never had a problem with it. It works good when we need it. And if you're at the beach and you're a surfer and you go into the water for a couple hours and you come out cold and all you want is unlimited hot water where you can just stand there and get your body temperature up, perfect it's for perfect. it. Yeah. Perfect for it's it. It's really great. I would be interested though, just for the fun of it, to like get one of those water testing kits and just see like what the quality of the water is yeah. Once we've used it. I'm just curious. We, you know, some people may think it's gross, but as far as like if you're out dry camping or boondocking, it's a good option. I found another one that is, uh, people have asked. Um, and I haven't answered this one in the comments for this person yet. I'll go back and do that. But uh, about the recirculating water tank, water system, why we have it 
a separate going to a separate tank before it recirculates rather than just pulling straight from the gray tank because the gray tank has your sink water in it it has your shower water like it's all mixed together you might have greases from stuff that you washed and all that stuff and it's just more contaminants that you would have to clean out plus by going to a smaller tank the idea that i had when i designed the system is you could put you could prime it every time you want to take a shower with like two and a half gallons of already hot water. If you put that into our 45 gallon gray water tank, wouldn't really make a difference. It would come out cold still. So it's for heat retention, cleanliness of the water, and filter longevity, I guess is the quick way to say it. Plus then that system is completely separate. You're not contam cross contaminating it with anything else that you might otherwise pour down your kitchen sink or bathroom sink, which sometimes things get put in there. Yeah. That you wouldn't want. Mm. That's why we did it that way. One other question about the recirculating shower system that we get a lot that I don't really have an answer for is how often do we have to change our filters? And we have not. We've cleaned them out. We've, we pull them out, we hose them out, we clean them all and put them back in because mm -hmm. we just have pleated filters. I have heard from people that use them full time in van living type stuff that have pretty much the same system. They, for two people, taking showers almost regularly every day. They replace them every four to six months, depending on the quality water coming out. Yeah, we don't so, use ours every single day. So, so do that with, do whatever with that information. Yeah. That's just what we have are kind of banking on. We carry a set of filters with us. How are our window coverings doing? Great. Thank you, Budget Blinds. Hashtag not an ad, we just, Really like them, they're holding up really well. I think the only part that I have not been a fan of is having to clean the blind behind our kitchen sink because that gets pretty dusty slash dirty. But I think- You have to do that anyway. You have to do that anyways. But our uh, top down, bottom up, what are honeycomb. they? Honeycomb blinds, they're spectacular. They work really good and they do insulate really, really yes. well. I guess people have been asking questions about our vinyl plank flooring. If we glued it down, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> we had a few strategic planks that we put down that started the pattern and we glued those down to anchor them and then the rest of them were just um, tongue and groove snapping in and they interlocked. We glued down the one up against our slide to anchor that one in and then we kind of started from there. We might have put some a little bit of glue down on the ones on the slides. Did we do that? Well we definitely glued the front panel. The front. Yeah. We might I don't know we might not have even done it on the slide like yeah. the flat area on the slide. I don't mm -mm. think we did. And we haven't really had any problems. No. No. It's, it's been, been great. really great. We haven't had any damage. I mean other than us like scratching stuff when you know all of our dishes fell out and but they haven't, it hasn't shifted, it hasn't split. Yeah. It's done really, really good. Very well. We're really happy with it. We also had people asking about the musty smell of an old RV. I know exactly what you're talking about. I think a lot of that was discarded when we got rid of the old couch and when we got rid of the carpet. I think it also helped that we scrubbed, cleaned the walls and repainted, but there is every once in a while, especially if the RV's been sitting all day, like if Ryan and I go out and go on a hike, like a really long hike and it's a full day and we come back and it's just been sitting and it just has that like a little faint hint. I think there are things like the carpet that's on the ceiling that we didn't yeah. remove. I think that if we went through and maybe shampooed that, but I mean, that's just, that's all kinds of craziness. So anyways, kind of a short video for this week. It's just been one of those weeks, kind of rough. We're recovering <laughs> and uh, I don't know, stay tuned. We're gonna show you the reasons why I'm covered in paint and hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll have a complete tour video. Yes, so hopefully we'll actually have completed it after a year and a half. Yeah. It's so funny. We like did all of the big stuff, but then you live in it for a year and you're, you realize all the little things that you neglected. And so we want to finish those up and show you what we did. Yep. 
So, thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>